Hey guys, in this video I'll be talking about what goes into the primary application and some strategies for filling it out. So if you're not familiar with what the primary application is or the process for applying to medical school, the first thing you fill out is the primary application. And it's also known as AMCAS, which stands for American Medical College Application Service. And this application includes pretty much everything you would need to apply to a medical school. So it includes your grades, your test scores, your letters of recommendation, your essays, and all your identifying information. And then once you submit this, it gets sent to all of the US medical schools you apply to, with the exception of Texas schools which have their own application. But once you fill this out, it has to get verified, which I will talk about later, and then schools will start sending you secondary applications. But this is actually a really good thing, at least for the schools that it does go to, because it puts all of your letters of recommendation and all of your transcripts and stuff in the same place so you don't have to send them to a bunch of different schools. Typically this application opens up around June 1st every year, and you will want to submit it as close to June 1st as possible because a lot of schools, actually most schools, have rolling admissions these days and your chances won't be as good if you submit during the later months of the application cycle as if you submit right on June 1st. And so the earlier they review your application, the more you're likely to stand out and they're going to invite you to interview. And if you're later in the application cycle and they've already read a bunch of applications, then yours is a lot less likely to stand out. It'll probably sound more similar to the ones they already have interviewed. And so there will be less slots for people like you. After you submit your primary, the the AAMC verifies your application, and I'll explain what that means in a bit, but this verification process generally takes around three to six weeks, and then once that's done, after June 28th, AMCAS will start sending your application to the medical schools that you designate on the application. And once the medical schools receive your application, most of them will send you a secondary. Some medical schools actually screen your primary before they send you a secondary, but nowadays most schools just want your money, so they will just send you a secondary and have you pay the money to fill so the secondary applications consist of a couple essays that are specific to each school and I'll make another video on those later. So after you submit your secondary, the schools will actually review your application fully and then th they will decide whether they want to interview you. And if they decide to interview you, those invitations to interview usually get extended between August and January and then the actual interviews happen between September and February, which is a really rough estimate and it really varies depending on the school. And then what also varies on the school is when they would send you an acceptance because the interview is the last step before they would accept you. So within the primary application, there are officially nine sections that you'll have to fill out, and I'll list them here, but I'm gonna go through each one individually. So in the first section, which is identifying information, they're going to ask you for five different things, your legal name, your preferred name, any alternate names that might appear on your identification, your student ID numbers at any college that you've ever attended, and your birth and sex information. So that'll go into where you were born and your sexual orientation. All of that is pretty simple and doesn't really affect your application in any way. It's just something that they need to know. The next section is schools attended. And in this, you'll go into where you went to high school. That's the only information they get about your high school is where you went and when you graduated. And then they get where you went to college. And in that, you have to list all of the places you've ever taken a college class. Even if you didn't finish the college class, if you've ever been enrolled in that university, you need to list it on this application. So through high school, I had done some dual credits. And so I had four different colleges that I had to list and send in my transcripts for, which is also part of this section. So the way transcripts work is within this application you will have a form generated that is made by AMCAS that gives that transcript an ID number and then what you'll need to do is send that form to your, the school that's sending the transcript and have them include that form with the transcript, which it gets complicated, especially when you're doing a lot of different schools and you have to figure out their methods. But if you're confused, you might wanna ask someone who has already applied to medical school from your school how they sent their transcripts and what the process looks like. A lot of schools nowadays have online systems where you can just upload that form as a PDF, as an external attachment to your transcript, and then it's really easy. You just pay a bit of money and have them send that transcript to AMCAS. And within the school's attended section, it'll also ask you if you've ever matriculated in a medical school before. And for the majority of applicants, this is gonna be no. And then the last part of this is institutional action. So if at any of the schools you have attended, you run into problems with disciplinary action, then you will have to list this in this section of the application. The next section is called biographic information. And it's kind of similar to identifying information, but they have a ton more information they require of you. So you have to list like your address and all of the contact information for you and your parents and then your parents income level and there were even some questions I think on how I paid for college and it might take some time to fill this out but really there is not really much you can do to do this section better than someone else. 
So the fourth section on AMCAS is coursework. And this is where you enter all of your grades and whether they're lab or lecture and when you took them, where you took them and what type of course it was. So I'm gonna put up here all the things you have to fill out. There's quite an extensive list of information they require of you for each course. And it's really important that you fill this, out, this section out perfectly so that it exactly matches your transcript. Because if it doesn't match your transcript, then the AMCAS is going to flag your application and not verify it. And that's what I was going to talk about in the verification process. AMCAS goes through line by line each transcript that you submit and looks at whether you submitted the right grade, whether it's the right type of course that you said it is. And if it's not, then they could either flag your application and you could get really delayed in the med school process, or they could just fix it for you if it's a really small mistake and just adjust your information. Usually that's what happens, but sometimes if you put in, like if you, for forget a course or completely put in a wrong grade, they could flag your application and it could really mess up your cycle. And while you're filling this out, if you have questions, I recommend watching the videos that the AAMC provides on the AMCAS because that's gonna give you the best idea of how to exactly to fill out a special situation. Like if you took an AP class or if you clapped out of a class, it'll explain how to fill that out. So once you've filled out your grades from each school for each class you've taken perfectly, then you move on to the work activities section. And this is something you'll wanna be planning months in advance just so you know exactly what you have, if you need to fill in something on your application that might be missing, so say you don't have any volunteer experience, that might be something that you wanna start doing like six months before you actually would submit the application. So within this section, you get to choose 15 different activities that will essentially define what you've done outside of the classroom during your undergraduate career. You can't include anything from high school, but once you graduate high school, you can include anything that you want on this section. But they're going to ask you a lot of information about each activity and ask you for contact information so for someone who can verify it. I'm not sure if they ever use that contact information, but it's really important that you have it there so that if someone has a question on, did you actually spend 1500 hours volunteering, then they can call the contact information and make sure that that's accurate. The other thing you list on here is the total number of hours that you spent. You don't have to list monthly hours or weekly hours like some people assume you would. You really only have to count your total hours. And then the final two parts of this are the essays on each experience. So you only get 700 characters, which is a really small paragraph about each activity. And then you get to choose three activities that are the most meaningful. And then you write a 1,325 character essay on each of those. Really, you want to be expressive in the 700 character essay on what exactly it was that you did. This is less of how it impacted you. If you have room for that, that's great. But really what's most important is that you explain exactly the details of everything that you were doing. So if you shadowed, explain who you shadowed and what you did while shadowing and what you saw. And if you have room, then you can explain how it impacted your desire to be a doctor. But really, in this section, the important essays are the ones by the most meaningful experience. This is the ones you want to spend some more time on. There's, like I said, there's 1,325 characters, and you only get to choose three of them. So within this, you really want to explain how this impacted your will to be a doctor. And say you already wrote about one of your experiences in your personal statement, and you have three others that you'd like to have more room to talk about, you can leave off the one that was in your personal statement and instead choose the three other ones you wanted to have time to write about. And it's really important that you make these essays as perfect as possible, because like I said, this goes to every medical school that you are applying to. And so if you completely screw something up, it could really mess up your application cycle. And as far as how exactly to approach writing these essays and these descriptions and the uh, most meaningful experience essays, I recommend following a similar pattern to the personal statement, which I will explain in another video, but the personal statement is coming and that's a longer essay where you can explain exactly why you want to go to medical school and you can include whatever you want in that. So one important thing to note is that there are 15 slots in here for you to put whatever you want in. And you can combine activities. If you have more than 15, you can combine like multiple shadowing experiences into one description, as long as you can describe all of them within the 700 character limit. And if you don't have 15, it's not not a problem at all. Some people have a lot of hours in one thing and that was going to be their selling point to get into medical school. And that's fine. Medical schools aren't going to say, oh, they only had 13 activities or only they, oh, they only have eight activities. Even though they spent a ton of hours, I wanted to see more spread out. They're not going to say that. They are human and they will understand that not everyone has done all of these different things in their spare time during college. So the next section of the application is letters of recommendation. And the important thing to know about this is that you don't have to have it done by the time you click submit and submit your application for verification. AMCAS doesn't verify your 
their letters of recommendation so you can add them as late in the application cycle as you want. But this is the screen for adding a letter. You have to choose whether it's a committee letter or an individual letter or a letter packet. Different schools do it differently. So personally, I went to a small school and we didn't have a letter packet available. So I ended up sending my pre-med committee letter as one letter and then a bunch of individual letters. But if you go to a bigger school, then they likely have a system that puts together all of your letters into one packet and then it gets sent all at once. And that kind of takes away your flexibility to choose which letter goes to which school, but it's also a lot easier to just choose one letter and send it to all the schools rather than trying to choose individual letters like I did. The next section on here is medical schools and this is also something that you can complete after you submit the application. So what I did was I chose one school that I really knew I would apply to and listed that on my initial application. And then after I had decided officially which schools I would apply to, which ended up being 17 different schools, I added those to my application and saved it, which didn't cause any problems in my chances or anything. It just got my application in sooner for verification. So the next section is probably the most important section of the application, and that's the essay section. And this is where you write your personal statement. So the personal statement is 5,300 characters and essentially you explain why you want to go to medical school. And I'm going to make a video on this and how exactly to approach writing a personal statement for medical school. I don't recommend just keeping yourself to 5,300 characters right away. I recommend writing a lot more than that and then condensing it down. Uh, but I'll explain that in another video. And the final section on here is the standardized test section. So the AAMC will automatically put in your MCAT score if you have it back into this application. And then if you don't have your score back yet, or if you haven't taken it yet, then there's a question that says, do you have any recent or future test dates that you would like to list for medical schools to be aware that it's coming? And then you would just list, okay, I'm planning on taking it at the end of June and then the medical schools would be aware of that and that wouldn't affect your application at all. So I almost always recommend submitting as early as possible even if you don't have your score back because then you can get the verification process which takes three to six weeks out of the way even if you don't have your school list finalized because you don't have your MCAT score. So I hope this video has been helpful and that I've kind of explained some of the questions you might have had on what exactly goes into the application. And if you have questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I definitely try to respond to all the questions that I get.